Couch Live. We got uh, Mel, we got uh, Emil, and we got uh, Woz. How are we all? Very well. Very good. Very good. Very good. All good. Excellent. Excellent. Um, got another question from uh, an avid listener. Someone that says they pretty much listen to every one of the Culture Couch Live. So it's great to uh, great. We've got a, a viewership now that's pretty consistent. Well, so you've done a done a good job as a marketing guru getting this Culture Couch Live out there. So give yourself a pat in the back. There's a bit of real talk. Yeah. Exactly. This one's from Sharon, and, and it's, I guess, a little bit of a, not, not so much a controversial question, but probably something that's come up a lot. We've been reading a lot of articles about this, but Sharon's question was, you know, what are the signs that I should be reading to leave my job? Okay, and, and we've, we've probably listened to a few podcasts, read a lot of articles about sort of the Great Reset and people you know, thinking a bit more about their jobs through COVID and all that sort of stuff. So that's, that's a pretty good question, but let, let's sort of break it down. Um, so when, let, I'll, I'll be pretty blunt, blunt here, Emil. So when should someone leave their job? The first thing I wrote was just values. When your values aren't aligned with, yeah. especially leadership, it's really difficult to stay because you catch yourself out of integrity all the time. And, I think that's a real visceral thing. Like when you, I know in my experience, when, I, when I'm living the values of the team that I'm with, I feel great. And yeah. when I don't, I don't feel great. Like it's mm. a physical experience, if you will. Yeah. So um, if Sharon's turning up to work and constantly second guessing herself and feeling a bit, like the, the crazy one or the outsider, then there's probably a values misalignment. Um, and that can come in a number of different ways, but obviously what the leaders are speaking is not matching their behaviours is the simple equation from a values perspective. And that's why, you know, we, we pride ourselves on defining what our values look like in terms of clear team behaviour. So that's, yep. that's the first thing that comes to mind for me. Yeah, hundred percent. I guess I guess Mel, there's that hundred percent enjoyment where you, to, to Emil's point, you walk into the office, you love the people you work with, the boss has got aligned the values, your culture codes up on the wall, you know, it it, it really again aligns to your values. And I suppose a diff, slightly different question because I've said to Emil, when should you leave? But but most people are probably in a, a state of flux somewhere between I don't know 30 percent and 80 percent it's very rare you're going to get a hundred percent but what what to you with some of the things you could potentially change do you think like as an individual you're not that comfortable you've got that feeling in the pit of your stomach when you're going into work every day and you sort of think do I want to be here or don't I want to be here well, what are some of the things you think you can change and how do you go about changing them Hmm. It's a great question because I think we need to understand that we are all responsible for culture in, a, in an, in an organisation. Yeah. So it's easy to walk in and go, right, oh, this place isn't great. Everything's a bit crap. I feel crap in my role. I'm not excited to be here to end point. No, viscerally, it doesn't feel right. But yeah. I think one of the things we need to acknowledge is that every individual is responsible for culture. So yeah. um, change, start with yourself. Um, it sounds cliche, but look at your own behaviour. Are you a part of what is not a great culture? If you're a leader, you've got to look at that. Um, so there are aspects of it, I think, that come back to the individual. Beyond that, yes, look at the environment around you. Are you excited to be there? Do you feel like this is the right place for you? Are you in sync with the organisation? Are you getting the support that you need from your organisation? Um, and don't look at a day. Don't look at one day, two days, or even a week. Have a look at how the organisation, how you're relating to your organisation and vice versa from a longer-term perspective. Everybody has good days, bad days, but, you know, are you feeling like this is, you have a sense of belonging? Because we talk a lot about belonging, don't we, in our, in our yeah. program and everybody having a voice. Are you valued? Um, are you putting your voice out there? So there's a few different aspects to look at, really. Yeah, I like that. I like that individual decision and I think following that from that was it's sort of like well I can change part of my environment you know I can be more engaged as a leader 
I can build better relationships as an individual, et cetera, et cetera. I can make sure I'm rewarding on the culture code, being positive, et cetera, et cetera. So maybe talk to that because you've run a couple of companies as well. What, what have you found in terms of what you can control and how far does that spread? And, and when do you hit a, an absolute roadblock where you go, it's just not worth it anymore? Yeah, I think it, well, it can become quite tiring, right? If you're going to, if you're going to continue to hold yourself to a specific level of, you know, um, communication, relationship building, um, energy, positive energy, and try and make that difference. But you know, we talk about that sort of leadership top down approach. If the leaders above you aren't willing to do that, I think that's where you know that energy over time will break down. I think you've got to. I think. The, what, the thing Emil said, the spiritual aspect, connectivity is absolutely key. But if you haven't been able to go through the evolution of what we have or what we provide or even a, a company similar to us, uh, an evolution of building the infrastructure to create that engagement yeah. and that culture, you're going to probably really struggle at that sort of middle management or even you know, entry-level employee um, uh, Status to, to make an influence, so you need you need to have the right framework in place. Um, but I think I actually had an interview last night um, with a you know, employer was given a reference to me, and one of the questions said, "Well, how does this person deal with feedback?" And I said, "Well, because he came from my framework, yeah. he's he's actually been he he will um, receive feedback better than anybody else." But my, what I want you to take back to the company that he's going to work for is how do they receive feedback? Yeah, that's right. Because yeah. the reality yeah. is, is the challenge that we find in that layer, if you're feeling like you, you want to make an influence, you're only going to get the influence if you can make that change to that individual. Yeah, yeah. And they're going to create the buy-in or they're going to buy in and they're going to change their behaviour. Um, to influence that throughout the rest of the organisation. Otherwise, yeah. it's time to go. Simply yeah, so. I, think, I think it's a really important one, isn't it? Because more and more, Emil, we, we see teams that haven't put systems in place yeah. and they think something's going to change without a system. And being in such a systematic business that I've been in for 40 years, where, I mean, it's a bit like Groundhog Day, but every week's the same, but it's a systematic approach to yeah. football, review Monday morning, you know, yeah. bring the team in afternoon, review, individual review, get on to the next week. The systems are off the charts. Yeah. And it's probably the thing that surprises me. And I think, Sharon, can you see some systems? Are there some systems in place already? If there are, I think you can give those systems a, a time to, to take because it's not going to happen overnight. I, so I think my advice to Sharon, Emil, is just look for systems. How can yeah. I impact systems and how can I put systems in place? Yeah. I, and I think the, the, the first step, because there might not be anything there, and this is almost like the biggest step, you know, you think about the big, the biggest domino once you push it over, a lot of others fall over, is, is really go and have the conversation with her direct leader yeah. and say, yeah. Yeah. I need to book some time with you. Yeah. I want to talk about duh, 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 When's a good time? Give yourself the space to move into. Give them, the leader, the space to know what the conversation's about. Have that chat. And then, because I know, in my experience, when I haven't had the chat, you just play like Forrest Gump against the table tennis ball. You yeah. keep hitting the thought, which is the ball, and it just keeps rebounding back to you too, too fast to give yourself the space. So um, to identify... If there are systems or there is opportunity for growth and a different work environment, the first and also probably the biggest step is to actually have the conversation with her direct leader. Yeah. Yeah, I think it, I, I 100% agree. It's, it's interesting, was, isn't it? Like you've been the CEO a couple of times. It's, you, and this is why the CEO is so important because mm. he needs to get feedback as well. And, I, and you'd hate to think Sharon walks out with ever having the conversation with the CEO or the boss or whoever it is that she's yeah. struggling with. Because often that CEO just doesn't know, doesn't get yeah. the feedback. 
Yeah. So I think it's a really good point that, to try and help that leader out. Yeah, the dozen no factor is the big one. And, and that's uh, uh, my favourite part of our program is, the, is, is that session where, you know, the ultimate leader, and, and I've obviously been at the top of, you know, sort of the, top of the table or, or the first one to receive feedback in that scenario, but the biggest power is going around the room. No one's actually talking to each other, but they all say the same thing. And yeah. that, that aha moment, you know, that's that's when you really know if you've got a strong leader or not. Because that, yeah. you know, the, the leader who's not willing to change based on that consistent feedback from the team below them is, is someone who's very toxic for the environment and probably is going to have a revolving door of employees working underneath them until yeah. either the board or or the business um, takes them out or the business fails. And that's that's as, as simple as that. Yeah, no, I, I, on, on the back of that, Mel, I mean, picking up from what was it says, what, what we know, and this is probably a bit of a, a red flag to the bosses out there that haven't created a good culture. You're going to lose the best people the quickest. So the best, we know the best people are the first ones to leave. So I don't, I've never met Sharon. I don't know who she, who she is, but a, I guarantee she's probably a pretty good worker. Yeah, because she's actually asked the question because her self-worth is too high. So Mel, talk to the cost of not having a good culture. It's an it's enormous. Absolutely, Rosie. I mean, that, that's one of the things that we were talking about um, just the other day in terms of the cost for, so that someone's put a number on it um, and there's lots of calculations, but it's something like $2 billion in Australia alone for disengaged employees. Yeah. And you look at the cost of hiring, you look at the cost of having an absence in, in that role, you look at the cost of ongoing absenteeism in a team, you look at the, the cost, it is, there's just so many we used to think they were unquantifiable costs, but but they're not. Mm. They're actually yeah. very quantifiable costs. And, you know, somebody else put a number on 20% of an employee's salary is what a disengaged employee costs. I mean, imagine that for the fatter salaries. Um, so engaged leaders are so important. And I actually think that touches too on one of the things that is a real indicator for, for, for leaders is the, the rate of absenteeism. And mm. look yeah. at the, the number of people who don't want to come into the joint. I mean, yep. it's a, it's a, you can crystallise it that way if, if you have to, but there's a lot of indicators. And I think traditionally turnover has been seen as something that's, that's poor um, and an indicator of success. But in a transitional stage, a rate of turnover, getting rid of the low um, yeah. performers, as you yeah. say, Rosie, is, yep. is, is key. To, to lifting performance. Yeah. So leaving can be good for the individual and for the employer. So I think that has to shift as well. It's not always a bad thing if somebody goes, particularly yeah, to bring absolutely. them. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why the system is so important. If you've got a yeah. strong system in place, a person who's a great performer for a period of time may not be the best performer for the team in the next period of time. Yeah. Life changes, children yeah. all different types of things and, you know, I see it far too often that we hang on to people because we feel like we care for them when actually it's quite the opposite. We're not caring enough to let them go to find the tribe and the team where they will thrive because no one, like I say it all the time, no one turns up to work wanting to do a crappy job. Yeah, um, that's the truth. And the longer we keep them, the longer everyone talks about them and then it's not doing anyone a favour um, so if we talk about care a lot, well, if you care enough, your system will enable them to thrive and also allow them to move on to a greener pasture. Yeah, 100% well said. Like, well, I think that hopefully for Sharon, it's not an exact science, is it? Like we can't actually give it. <laughs> yeah. But hopefully there's some tips there and some really good tips from uh, well done, Mel and Was and M. And I, I think it is. It's what can you impact can you yeah. put systems? We're huge on systems. Can you put systems in place? I think the values piece is really important. Do your values align? So, Sharon, hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea. And we, we certainly hope that you, you stay in the, the organisation and make an impact because, um, you know, it, it's really important. We have good leaders, good people, good companies, particularly in, the, in these times. So, thanks, guys. So hopefully Sharon's got something out of that and hopefully she stays at the company. If she doesn't, she'll go and have a good impact at somewhere else. But thanks, Mel. Thanks, 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 Good luck, Sharon. All right. We'll see you next week on the Culture Couch Live. Thank you. Mm -hmm.